हेलो डॉक्टर्स होप यू आर ऑल वेल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एयरवे डिसीज इन द पल्मोनरी क्रिटिकल केयर सीरीज द क्वेश्चंस आर आस्क्ड फ्रॉम द मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेशन स्ट्रेटजीज व्हिच यू विल यूज इन द ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एयरवे डिसीज लाइक सीओपीडी एंड एस्थमा देयर आर टोटल ऑफ थ्री क्लिनिकल वीनेट्स व्हिच विल बी डिस्कस्ड एंड रिमेनिंग uh mcqs and clinical vnet you may find at the end of this video which will be flashed and the answers of which will be shared in the comment box below so here we start question number 1 a 62 year old man is brought to the emergency department with a four day history of increasing dyspnea and an increasing sputum production he is a former cigarette smoker two packs per day for the last uh, 40 years and he quit 5 years ago at baseline he is short of breath on climbing one flight of stairs and uses supplemental oxygen with sleep at 2 liter per minute medications include long acting anticholinergic drugs and occasional use of a short acting beta agonist he has been given 2 liter per minute nasal oxygen in the ambulance on physical examination he is lethargic and erosible but able to follow simple commands respiratory rate is 16 breaths per minute chest examination reveals increased anterior posterior diameter low diaphragms very decreased breath sounds bilaterally and no wheezing his chest x ray shows hyperinflation but no obvious infiltrate and his lateral chest x ray suggest right ventricular enlargement arterial blood gas shows ph of 7.32 pco2 of 69 mm of mercury and po2 of 44 mm of mercury which of the following is your first step a intubation and mechanical ventilation b non invasive ventilation c supplemental oxygen using a venturi mask or d computed tomography scan of chest with ct angiogram the diagnosis is very clear from the history itself that this patient has developed acute exacerbation of copd with a respiratory failure type 2 respiratory failure now we have to proceed for the immediate step the first step in the management okay and his gcs is intact okay on examination so this pco2 is not a narcotic pco2 so there is no question of intubation and option a is ruled out and iv also not needed at present because this much pco2 is normal for him ct pulmonary angiography will be useful to find the cause of rv enlargement which has been seen on the lateral chest x ray in this question however this looks also a uh, chronic corpomonel and uh, there is no tachypnea Uh, so uh, there is no sign and uh, symptom suggestive of pulmonary embolism at present so ct pulmonary angiogram can wait in this patient okay uh, first we have to stabilize his oxygenation because uh, this patient is desaturating so oxygen administration is always appropriate for a patient who is severely hypoxemic although this can also worsen the hypercarbia because the oxygen uh, the respiratory drive will be lost due to oxygen which will flush the uh, carbon dioxide so oxygenation ultimately can worsen the hypercarbia so we should always do something to you know maintain the oxygenation just uh, between the 88% to 92% in copd patient and there shouldn't be saturation goal more than 92% if hypercarbia worsens or the patient's mental status worsens then definitely we have to think of ventilatory support so after having discussed the question number 1 we are going to move to question number 2 a 25 year old man with a history of severe asthma with history of previous hospitalizations and multiple intubations presents to emergency department with severe uh, with the several days of worsening dyspnea despite the frequent use of albuterol nebulizations the same morning he visited a friend who has a cat and his dyspnea rapidly worsened chest x ray shows hyperinflation 
and the emergency department physician gives sol uh, solumedrol that is stripe and continuous albuterol uh, nebulization and initiates the critical care consultation because of persistent accessory muscle use after an hour of care in the emergency department which of the following statement about the severe asthma exacerbation is correct a peak expiratory flow is predictive of arterial oxygen saturation b intravenous magnesium is not recommended c the use of heliox that is helium oxygen mixture is well supported in the literature d following intubation the respiratory rate should be set 14 to 20 breaths per minute or e increasing extrinsic peep may help improve breath triggering during the resolution phase so what should be your correct choice over here in this question there is no hypoxemia and severe hypoxemia is unusual in asthma if it is occurring it suggests that there is a either presence of pneumonia or extensive mucus plugging. Reduced peak expiratory flow that is PEF generally predicts the hypercapnia rather than hypoxemia. However, hypercapnia is rare until peak expiratory flow falls to less than 25%. So you remember that PEF less than 25% hypercapnia will come into picture. Okay. Magnesium sulfate is recommended initial therapy with bronchodilators if bronchodilator fails. Now regarding the heliox, it can reduce the resistance to airflow, it can smoothen the airflow and make your patient very comfortable but so far clinical trials have yielded the conflicting results. You know, whenever you are ventilating an asthma patient the pco2 can be tolerated okay so hypercapnia should be tolerated as far as the ph is normal more than 7.2 if it is going less than 7.2 ph is not compensated by the bicarb increase then definitely you should think of uh, either giving more bicarb provided the patient is on mechanical ventilation now whenever you are ventilating uh, an asthmatic patient Dynamic hyperinflation is a problem due to wrong ventilatory settings. So dynamic hyper, uh, hyperinflation creates intrinsic peep or auto peep because of air trapping or volume trapping inside the alveoli, which in turn decreases the venous return and also puts the right ventricle into a strain and can precipitate the cardiovascular collapse. So whenever an asthmatic patient is dropping the blood pressure, think of dynamic hyperinflation. Therefore, every effort should be made to minimize the auto peak. Asthma specific ventilator settings are low respiratory rate, 10 to 12 per minute, short inspiratory time, longer expiratory time, I ratio 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 4 or even 1 is to 5. High flow rate, uh, you should set at least a flow rate of 90 to 120 liter per minute on mechanical ventilator and optimize the triggering. Intrinsic peep can be measured during an expiratory pause or you know it is a maneuver, expiratory hold maneuver while patient is either deeply sedated or completely paralyzed. Okay, setting the extrinsic peep or applied peep to up to 80% of the intrinsic peep can reduce the inspiratory effort required to trigger the ventilator without substantially increasing the risk of barotrauma. However, this strategy is most useful during the ventilator weaning phase when patient is conscious and is uh, about to trigger the ventilatory breath. Now we will move on to question number 3, our last question. A 30-year-old man with severe asthma is admitted to the ICU with an acute asthma exacerbation. He is intubated, paralyzed and mechanically ventilated. His ventilator settings are assist control, pressure control mode, pressure, uh, inspiratory pressure of 30 cm, respiratory rate of 20 breaths per minute, FiO2 of 0.5 and PEEP of 5 cm of water. 
His ABG on these settings is pH 7.3, PCO2 55, PO2 150. On day 2 of his ICU stay, an end expiratory hold maneuver is performed and his airway pressure is measured at 15 cm of water. Several hours later, he is noted to have progressive tachycardia and his blood pressure has decreased from 120 over 90 to 75 over 55 mm of mercury. A chest radiograph demonstrates the similar findings to the prior day without evidence of new infiltrate or pneumothorax. What is the best next step in the management of this patient? A. Briefly disconnect the ventilator from endotracheal tube. B. Perform a needle decompression at the second intercostal space. C. Perform an emergent bronchoscopy. D. Increase the respiratory rate on mechanical ventilator or E. Decrease the set peep on the ventilator. So this is the last question and uh, it's very interesting question. This patient has developed the hypotension on this kind of ventilator settings. Probably the respiratory rate is very high leading to dynamic hyperinflation induced hemodynamic instability. So uh, hemodynamic instability in this patient is due to intrinsic PEEP okay, or otherwise known as dynamic hyperinflation which increases the intrathoracic pressure, decrease the venous return, increase strain on right ventricle and uh, pushing the left ventricle okay, and decreasing the left ventricular ejection fraction. So this is a life threatening complication that requires the immediate release of trapped gas from the lungs and this is best done by disconnecting the mechanical ventilator circuit from the endotracheal tube for a very brief time. So answer A is correct. Intrinsic PEEP can be very common in patients with obstructive lung disease as I said in the previous MCQ without evidence of pneumothorax on radiograph on ultrasound or any uh, you know high clinical suspicion a uh, needle decompression is not appropriate so answer b is wrong bronchoscopy is occasionally utilized to clear the mucus plugging in patients with severe asthma however this would not explain the patient's hypotension so answer c is incorrect an increase in the respiratory rate will decrease the patient's inspiratory or sorry expiratory time and lead to worsening gas trapping so option d is incorrect a decrease in the extrinsic peep set on the ventilator will not decrease the intrinsic peep and will not improve the patient's hemodynamics so answer e is also incorrect so this is how we uh, uh, we solve the mcqs in the exam we go for the correct option okay if we think that this is the correct option or most appropriate option we have to rule out the other options by reasoning and logic so you should always be very very correctly uh, read all the options okay given in mcqs otherwise you would hit the wrong answer so thank you so much for your attention and uh, i'm going to end this video here uh, you will see further MCQs at the end of this video and you can type your correct answer in the comment box. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.